Hey everybody, welcome into your Tuesday edition of the 10 TV Weather Impact Show. We're so glad you're joining us because we do have some new information today. Yes, we have an yeah. alert day we're following and it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, going to be kind of interesting as uh, so we could see uh, some storms maybe in the afternoon and then some stuff overnight, a lot of things happening and then after that, we got the heat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we, I don't My know hair, if we're ready. <laughs> I just, I can't. I mean, I yeah. was talking with all the girls in the studio this morning. We could just feel the humidity even mm -hmm. indoors. It just feels so heavy outside. Yeah. I mean, dew points getting close to 70 here even today. We don't even have the heat yet. So what we have in store the weekend, I don't know. It's like in Back to the Future. Heavy, what is that What is that heavy you, you just say in the <laughs> yeah. future? I think of Doc Brown when you say heavy. Oh, yeah. Oh, such a good movie. <laughs> I know. Let us know your favorite movies, too. But we do want to get right to the 10 weather impact forecast. Just a reminder, we do still have that flood, flood watch out there. That is going to include some of our southern and our eastern, southeastern counties. You can see that does include Cambridge, Zanesville, Athens, Chillicothe. That does go through the this evening and that is going to be for a risk of localized flooding more of that nuisance flooding but just remember to turn around don't drown if you come to flooded roads now our headlines for today yes we're going to continue to see some chances of showers and storms most of those already happened this morning but the stronger storm chances as we mentioned looking to be on Wednesday later in the day and this weekend, the heat will be our new focus for our weather impact. So here is the new weather impact alert we issued it this morning, and that is going to be for that concern of strong storms. So what are we looking at? The timing would be about Wednesday late afternoon, evening, but especially as we go into the overnight hours, all different hazards are going to be possible. Damaging winds, we could see some hail and hail. By the way, severe criteria is one inch in diameter, which is about the size of a quarter, and we can't rule out a few spin ups. So just make sure you you have those ways to get warnings, especially after dark when you can't really see that storm system move in. You'll just have to wait to get those alerts when they are issued. But you can see we are on a level two that is going to be mainly for that damaging wind potential. And everything else, like I said, is going to be on the lower end of things. So just make sure that you do know that these are our concerns. And any kind of storm could produce any kind of hazard. But not every storm is going to be severe. So just know that. We could have some stronger storms. But once that warning is issued, that means the criteria is met for it to be a severe thunderstorm. So let me walk you through hour by hour. Again, you can see earlier today those showers and storms moving out. Anything we have for the rest of the afternoon and evening is very similar to yesterday. More I like to call it a popcorn, like here or there kind of storm. It's not going to be a widespread event by any means. And with any of these cells that develop, we could see some pretty heavy downpours possible. If it's a thunderstorm, obviously dangerous cloud to ground lightning. Remember, if you can hear thunder, that means lightning is close enough to strikes. So you want to get indoors and be somewhere safe. If you're at your kid's soccer game, for example, it's a good thing just to go indoors, go into your car, let that storm pass before you go back outside again. So overnight tonight, we'll stop the clock here at midnight. We might actually have some brief showers passing through or some light rain. And then as we go into the late morning, you can see we might have a few pop up cells earlier in the day. But let's move the clock ahead and go into the afternoon because you notice all that sunshine, all that clearing, not necessarily a good thing for us. Well, first off, it's going to be humid, but it's also going to be really allowing the atmosphere to destabilize or to get really prime and ripe for any storms that move into here to grow and to develop. So you can see right now with this model and Aaron will show you another one. And this is what makes our forecast so hard. This could have storms firing up as early as 6 p.m. on. And what's going to happen is you'll get a cluster of storms that moves through. Again, it's these individual cells we're worried about. Here's 9 o'clock you can see impacting the metro. And then continuing to go from west to east as we go into the evening. And then things are looking at clearing out as the front passes through. We could even see some pop up showers. But the good news is the latest updates would have us actually clearing out for the day on Thursday. We just might have some pretty strong winds that we will be dealing with. But as we move forward into the next couple of days, you'll notice we really see that peak in temperatures. Again, that heating is going to definitely boost things up tomorrow. We go back right around closer to average on Thursday, but then once we go into Friday and into the weekend, we really dry out again. We're going to update Thursday for us, and then we will see pretty much day after day of sunshine 
and also temperatures really, really climbing for us. I mean, yes, the air temperature might be in the 90s, but with that humidity creeping back up, this is the concern. We could be looking at feels like temperature in the triple digits, which is very dangerous heat. It's the kind of heat that heat exhaustion, heat stroke becomes more and more likely if you're not taking care of yourself. So. You know, just just giving you a heads up yeah. if your kids have a softball game this weekend or you're thinking about going out of the pool, you want to make sure you factor some breaks into your plans. Yeah, definitely. Just so you know, stay cool, stay hydrated, uh, take some breaks. I know there's going to be some events going on. Oh, and there's the, the Clippers the game's going County on. Fair. You got the Pickaway County Fair still happening uh, even into this weekend. Uh, so the heat is going to be a serious concern, of course, as we go through Saturday, Sunday, and even into early next week. But right now, our focus is, of course, on that severe weather threat. We have that right. weather impact day here for tomorrow evening into tomorrow night. As we talk about severe weather, this is a video. This is a time lapse from the Mankato, Minnesota area. Watch as we uh, go through. This is from the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Yesterday evening uh, just sped up this video just so you can see that storm rolling through. There's a little bit of rotation. This storm actually produced a tornado just 30 minutes before it rolled through that area. So pretty uh, ominous sight uh, yesterday across the state of Minnesota as we were tracking severe weather. And this is the whole same storm system that's building in for us tomorrow. And it's going to bring that severe weather threat. So as we talk about the severe weather, looking back at the last 24 hours of the storm reports that we had across the area, we had several reports of some hail in parts of Nebraska, South Dakota, Iowa, and even into Minnesota there. You can see all those uh, red icons. Those are all the tornado reports, including that one just northwest of Mankato before that video that you saw there uh, rolled through. And now the severe weather threat shifting further to the south and actually increasing across parts of Kansas where they could be de dealing with damaging wind gusts, even some hail and tornadoes. And then as we go into tomorrow, of course, as Meredith talked about, we have that weather impact alert here as we have the risk of strong to severe storms, especially looking back towards the west across that area in orange. That is a level three risk where the storms are likely to develop across Indiana into northwestern Ohio and then track to the south and east moving in as we go through the evening into the overnight hours. So this is a different computer model. Meredith showed one that had some storms popping up in the afternoon evening hours. This one not doesn't really have that, but it has a line of storms rolling through as we get towards about midnight and just thereafter. But you'll notice kind of falling apart. So there's a lot to still kind of come together in terms of the overall forecast as we're looking ahead to that potential for severe weather going into the day tomorrow. And I think it's really important to remember when we issue these alert days, somebody in our viewing area could see a severe storm. Yeah. So a lot of times, you know, the alert goes on your screen. It's not your county. We're putting something out for everybody that watches us here on 10 TV. So just uh, just know, give us a little grace when we have those warnings that are issued. We just want the people in those communities, just like if it was your community, to know this is the problem, this is the concern, and you need to take shelter and be safe. And so we would rather issue something with knowing somebody in the area is going to be dealing with that threat versus not issuing yep. it, and then it's as I hate to hear sometimes a surprise. Yeah, it only takes one storm one to be a storm. problem. So good to be issuing that. Good to be aware of what's happening here as we go into tomorrow. We've already seen some pretty active weather right. here uh, recently and even not too far away. This is new video this morning showing an apartment in West Virginia destroyed wow. by flooding. You can see a lot of water pouring from the top of one of the buildings and the governor Governor uh, Patrick Morsey says at least six people have been killed in the state. Officials say there were multiple rescues in the Fairmont area, which is in the northeastern part of the state, and it got up to four inches of rain in just 30 minutes. Four inches of oh rainfall gosh. in 30 minutes. That it's sounds like wild. hurricane, like down, tropical downpour yeah. situation there. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. And lift off of Falcon Eye. Go SpaceX, go Starlink. I always get chills. We want to just shift gears as we close this out and let you know that was the launch of the SpaceX Falcon 9 from the Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. That was on June 16th. Now, the mission of this launch is to put 26 Starlight satellites into low Earth orbit, which, as you know, with Starlink is getting Internet to those more rural uh, locations, like if you're out backpacking, yep. things like that, or countries that may not have connections to Internet or Wi-Fi. Um, 
those Starlink satellites help out with that. Yeah, and if you've uh, watched this uh, Weather Impact show multiple times with us, you know, we love to talk about space, love to talk about those uh, <laughs> right. rocket launch launches, of course, and always cool to see, you know, hearing the countdown and just actually seeing that launch take off and always doing, uh, you know, some good missions, like you said, right. launching those satellites to uh, allow for internet access to rural areas, and there's obviously a lot more missions coming up, and I know you were mentioning one that's been delayed here for oh my a little goodness. bit of time, but that's going to be eventually happening. Axum Space, they have their mission coming up, led by the legendary Peggy Whitson. That's going to be later this week, so we'll be keeping a close eye on that as well. Yeah, so looking forward to that, looking forward to, you know, everything that's been happening, looking forward to actually, I would say Thursday and Friday, those cooler temperatures. Aye. after the Fingers storms crossed. and then uh, seeing what happens with the uh, heat this weekend. Well, we have always got you covered and just know you can always get your update here. That's it for today on 10 TV Plus, but coming up later tonight, we have Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz. He'll be in with the updated versions and everything you need to know. Until then, just know you always go to freaking news weather online. It's always going to be at 10TV.com. We'll see you here back tomorrow.